So, Mary, we are here in January. It's January, still gray. Yep. It's <laughs> still gray, still kind of warmish yeah. in the 25 to 30 range, day and night. So, yeah. it's pretty boring. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we had been talking about the logging industry in Wisconsin and, and a huge impact it had on the state and Trempeau County. Yes. And uh, in part one, we talked about what they did, how they did the logging. In part two, we're going to talk about what happened after they had all the logs off. Yeah, it's a it's an incredible process. It was. And, you know, what we learned in the first segment was just amazing, wasn't it? And the second is, is going to be pretty interesting, too, because it was kind of a boom and bust thing. So we'll find out what happened after the logs were gone. Okay, great. Okay. And you, I don't know if you're aware of this, but right now lumber is in uh, pretty high demand. It's it pretty is. expensive. It is. And do you know why? Well, I think it has to do with trade tariffs and okay. avail uh, I there it's complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. It's an industry I don't really follow closely. Um, other than when you go to the local lumber yard to, to get a few sticks, yeah, as so, they're called. But it, it sounds like right now, wood's pretty expensive. So you go down to the lumber yard a lot to buy a couple two-by-fours? Well, I'm not necessarily the two-by-four guy, but Bruce sure is. All right, so he, he's got projects. Oh, he's got projects going all the time. <laughs> well, that's good. We want to keep him busy. That's right. Okay. All right, so I think we're going to go inside and do part two. Enjoy. Where? <laughs> so, Mary, we're inside and we're nice and warm again now, right? Yes. So we're going to continue our conversation about logging. Yes. And if you didn't see part one, what we were talking about is how important the logging industry was to Wisconsin and Trenton County. Oh, Pony. huge industry, huge it, money maker. It was. And it was big between the years 1860 to 1910. And even though Trumplow County did not have the big white pine, Jackson County did. Right. When you went across the river and you got out there on the east side, that was where they did a lot of logging. And that's why the towns of Prey and City Point are out there, because that was where a they logging did a lot neighborhood. Of logging. It was. It and that's, was. that's outside of the Driftless area. Right. And it's flat and yep. wet. Very wet. Yeah. Swampy. Very unkind soils. And we, I talked, I had some numbers that we talked about uh, in part one that in 1897, uh, the northern counties of Wisconsin, and that also, they were also including Jackson County in this, um, there was like 24% of the land use was settlers, the government had 5%. The poor Native Americans had 2%. 2%, that's unreal. Yeah. And then the, the logging companies had 63%. They had a monopoly on the oh market. Oh boy, did they ever. And th there was a huge demand for logs back then because the, you know, the country was yeah. growing and what did you build with? Yeah, with wood. wood with that, wood. That was the resource that was available. You were not putting up houses made of plastic or aluminum. No, no. <laughs> So there was a big need for, for lumber, a huge business. And um, what do you, you know some things that uh, Wisconsin is number one in right now, that we lead the country in? Cranberries. Cranberries, yeah, I guess we fight it out with uh, Massachusetts. That's right. Uh, green beans, I believe. Yes, yes. And another one that we've been holding on to first place is binge drinking. Yes, that one, um, go Wisconsin, <laughs> go. We've got, you know, the brew, there's a huge brewing industry. That's right. And it's not only now the established brewing companies, but it's now there's lots of these mom and pop, what do they call them? Microbreweries. Microbreweries. Micro with IPA and yeah, there's all, and all, these all kinds of specialty stuff. And don't forget about the reinsurgence of the winery. Right. So, but uh, it used to be back in the days of the logging that in, uh, Wisconsin led the country in the production of wooden shingles. Oh, shakes. Yeah, of shingles. Well, where did we, what did we use for those? Well, they usually used cedar. Cedar. Yeah. 
But that was that was a big business in Wisconsin was turning out shingles because Ooh. that was before the asphalt shingles. Right, or, and you got to have a roof. Yeah, you got to have a roof. So that was a big thing, and the whole zenith of lumbering in Wisconsin was in 1890. That was really when Adam was at its peak. Um, but it started going down by 1910. I mean, these guys were efficient at hauling out this lumber, yeah. of cutting down these trees getting them over down to the river or the train track and then getting them to the sawmills. And uh, quite efficient, but by 1921, most, almost all that nice big virgin pine timber was gone. Was gone. Yes. And, but they did keep logging, but then they were logging mainly for pulp, for the paper mills. Right, because yeah. they didn't have the quality of no. the big trees because they took them all. Yeah. And, and so what was left after they had taken all these big trees, you know? Um, it was what they called the cutover. Yes. And it was stumps, pretty yeah. much, was what was left. And most of these lumber companies, they had no interest in reforestation. Well, you know, they grabbed and left. They did. It was boom and bust. They took what they could, and then they moved on. Yeah. No remediation nope. clauses with this kind of property. And they said that there was an average back then in the cutover of 117 stumps per acre. Wow, pretty dense trees. That was a lot of stumps. So what did they do? I mean, okay, the timber's off of this land. And so now what are they going to do with it? Well, you can either let it sit there and do nothing, or you can try to do something with it. So what they decided they were going to do, the, the log companies that owned these vast tracts, and also railroad companies, oh, they were going to sell it as farmland. Yeah, wasn't that a good idea? <laughs> glacial outwash. If you know your soils, glacial outwash <laughs> is like trying to farm on rocks. And, and so who did they try to sell it to? Mainly it was immigrants. The immigrants that right. couldn't speak the language. I know. Here's this. Poor family coming from somewhere and, you know, who knows, like Poland or oh, Germany Norway or any place. Right, and these people came here and here they were offering this land quite cheap. It was like 8 to $10 an acre. Yeah. And what they usually did was, of course, they would advertise that here is this wonderful chance to get this wonderful, productive farmland. Cheap. And so, for a lot of these people, this was a dream come true. Right. And they bought it sight unseen. Well, there was, you couldn't send a picture. Mm -hmm. You couldn't afford to do a picture. Well, there they, was no internet or real estate agents. They you were on your own. They didn't, yeah. And, and uh, some people that were taken up there to look at this cut over, they took them up there in the winter when the snow was deep. Covering all the stumps. So they couldn't see all the stumps. It was really industry, <laughs> industry, naughty, naughty. And this land was just not fit for farming. No, no. Acidy soils. So, and it was wet? Yes, swampy. Covered in stumps. Plus, the climate was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they weren't really able to grow a whole lot. No, no. They could maybe graze some cows around the stumps, but even so, it wasn't really good at growing alfalfa or clover. Either. No, no. It does a nice job with grasses. Yeah. And that's because it's wet. But, but if you can't get your cows to it because it's wet, you're out of luck. So here's these settlers, and they've bought in these farms, and so they're, they're up there and with all these stumps, so they got to get rid of these stumps. And I bet you that was a challenge. Well, they tried, first they tried pulling them out with horses or oxen, but that was huge. It was oh, so yeah. hard. I mean, it took a lot of work to get them well, pulled out. roots are deep. Yep. Yeah. And then you got a big hole. And what do you put in the big hole? Right. It was, and it was just a huge problem. Well, then we had the war, World War I. And guess what was left over after the war? <laughs> Explosives. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, come on. Everybody likes to blow stuff up well, in some way, shape, or form. They had a lot left over. They had like, as I look at this number, they had like 200,000 tons of TNT left over. That's incredible. And they sold it 
to a lot of these farmers here in Wisconsin. To get rid of stumps. Get rid of, you blasted out these stumps. <laughs> I wonder how many sticks of dynamite it would take. I've heard about dynamite fishing, right? Yeah. Everybody, you know. This was stumps. Look at that. Yeah. There you Kaboom. go. And uh, they said that at that time you could buy dynamite down at the feed mill. Oh, really? Yeah. How am I supposed to clear your land? My my grandpa, he he cleared a bunch of land and he, he had a lot of woods on his property and he, he just went and got the dynamite out <laughs> and went to it. I wonder if we should talk to Glenn Johnson or Chris Demeline over in Independence, the guys who've got the hardware stores, yeah. to see if uh, they carry TNT. You carry any TNT? <laughs> So boy, that was efficient, wasn't it? We had all this leftover explosive and we found a place to sell it, by there gosh. <laughs> so of course, a lot of these people tried. They really, you know, they were going to try to live eat, out there. Eat and the living off the land. Eat out a living. Uh, but it was pretty bleak, as you can imagine. This yeah. was up in Clark County. And uh, it just, it was just really tough. Well, and you know, even for them to have the resources to build a house, or they most likely, to me, these look like probably camp houses that either were left behind or they yeah. moved. Yeah. You know, you didn't even have good resources to build your own home. So, they and they did try. You gotta hand it to these people. Uh, they probably realized at some point that they'd gotten snookered on this yeah. whole deal, but they tried but everything was kind of against them, like the land and the climate for <laughs> well, big things. things. When, they, when they lost the farm or yeah. mo decided to move on, who retained the ownership? Did they go back to these logging companies? Because yeah. there's a tremendous amount of state-owned land where they've done a lot of this logging that over time, it just got turned back over to the state. Well, that was, this is kind of what happened. Like, uh, they were talking about, you know, people were, for about 10 years there, they were really trying to, to make something out of this cutover land. And um, now I should mention, too, there were some big names of lumbermen that, you know, they not only took off the lumber, <laughs> they sold this land. Um, Heinemann was a name, and Connor, and Ingram, and he was a big name up in Eau Claire. And then a couple that we've probably heard of um, are Knapp. Okay. And Stout. Okay. And Tainters. Yes, they all have buildings and streets and yeah. music, or, uh, entertainment halls named after them. Right. Like the Mabel Tainter Theater. Right, this is Menominee and Chippewa and Eau Claire. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, you've heard of Weyerhaeuser. Yes. Okay. That was a big company. And he just they just moved... Uh, west. But they said out of these big uh, lumbermen, the Connors were supposed to have been, uh, at least they had some ideas about you know, maybe some reforestation, oh, okay. trying to do some conservation. So they weren't all, you know, just pillaging, but uh, right. most of them got what they wanted, then they moved on. Um, and so after, after the logging boom, they figured that this cutover was about 80% of it was, was bare or burned over. There had been some big fires, too. Wow. So it wasn't great farmland. And this, like you said, what became a huge problem was the tax delinquency on these farms. Well, if you can't grow a crop, you can't, can't a sell living. a crop, right. you can't make the money to pay anything. Couldn't pay the taxes. And so... A lot of these farms were just up and abandoned, you know. People just, just walked away. Cut your losses and just go do something else. So here were counties that had all this tax delinquency. Forest County, which is way up north, I think. Yes, yes. They said for a while there that 43% of the land in that county was tax delinquent. Really? Yeah, that's a huge amount, really. It's just been abandoned. Wow. And even before the end of the log boom, Wisconsin was trying to address the problem of what they would do once, you know, the logs were gone. And they did pass a comprehensive forest law in 1903. Oh, okay. But what happened oh, no. was we had the Great War. Yeah. Prices for farm commodities went up. And people tried it again. And people tried 
that they were going to grow some crops out there. Oh, can you imagine the yeah. the, the second go around of, of tragedy? <laughs> no, tragedy it was terrible. And and so um, so I think they said that what they did with a lot of this tax delinquent uh, forest land was they would turn it into county forest. Oh, okay. And in 1928, the first county forest in Wisconsin was um, established? established. And where's that? I thought that maybe it was Jackson County, but I'm not certain. I couldn't nail that down. Okay. Yeah, but it could be. And then what they also did was uh, county started zoning for logging and farming. They were talking about what was appropriate. To do the land uses. Right. Let's pick yep. our land uses. Appropriate. And the state actually purchased over 400 farms that had been just abandoned or... Uh, delinquent? Delinquent, yeah. Well, and that was kind of a good play because then that put some resources right back into yep. the hands of the counties. Right. They were not going to do it if otherwise. They were teamworking, yes. Nancy. <laughs> they were working together for a common goal. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> You know, lessons we can learn That's right. from our history. That's right. And so they did turn a lot of this tax delinquent into either county or state forest. And Wisconsin, you know, if you go up north, there is some huge Tracks state forest up yes. there. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful yep. recreation opportunities for yeah. hunting and fishing and doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, because the, back then the idea of, you know, you cut off the trees, they didn't try to re plant trees. Right. That right. was not something they tried to do. But as it became apparent that this cutover land was not going to be successful farmland, that they had to do something with right, it. Right, right. Yeah, because it was also a big fire hazard. Yeah. Yeah. It was just growing kind of scrub trees, and so they actually tried to, to do some real forestry. And Jackson County, right now, this is, I gotta read this number, has 68,706 acres of state forest. Wow. In Jackson County. Especially when you go across the river and start going now, towards rapids. Now, I would assume, I mean, I planted trees in the La Crosse County forest. Yeah after a cutover when I worked as a conservationist down there a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> um, when I think of the number, it's like, well, I really probably don't want to say that on air because I'm only 22 years right? old, Nancy. <laughs> um, but I remember planting trees. And I kind of grew up in that we should plant tree culture. Yeah. Um, the Arbor Day always, if you right. filled out the form, they all sent you a couple of little trees. Um, I think we plant trees every year. We get them from the county. And originally, that just was not the idea. People were not, they didn't think about reforestation. No. they. Well, do you think they figured it would just grow back on its own? Well, at first they did, and that okay. didn't happen. Yeah. Right, right. So then they, they actually, uh, and then... Uh, they, they actually tried to you know, plant trees again. In 1927, they established a, a bill establishing um, school forests. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a school forest between Pigeon and Northfield. Right. About, right about in the neighborhood right, of the county right. line out there. And I know there, I think there's one out in Chimney Rock. and I mean, they're around the county, yeah. Dalesville. And the idea was that the school kids would learn about, you know, planting trees yeah. and managing the resources, and the, that was a good thing. That's a very good yeah, thing. that was a good deal. Um, and then in 1933, when they had the civilian conservation camps, the CCCs, yeah. those guys spent a lot of time um, replanting trees. That was a... That was something that they really had them doing. That was a good conservation effort. It, it was. Well, and it was to get people to work. You know, yeah, yeah. to Young, you know, we, healthy guys and everything out there replanting trees. So and uh, we did learn a lot from the Dust Bowl era. Hopefully, about maybe stepping up the plate a little bit and doing a better job yeah. with managing our resources. So that was they did put them to work planting trees. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, then uh, there's a, a organization, Wisconsin Woodland Owners Association. Oh, okay. So they've that's, got their own club. That's been created, and their motto is, Economics are important, but sustainable practices should be the utmost goal of any timber sale. 
That makes sense. Yeah, so you take what you need, but then you better put something back and take care right. of what you left behind. Right. Because um, in, in 2017, they said uh, out of all the jobs that we have in Wisconsin, was it 13.5 uh, were uh, forest industry jobs. Wow, that's yeah. a decent percentage. Yep. That's quite a bit. And in 2019, they said that Wisconsin had uh, 17.1 million acres of forest. Wow. And that is like almost half of the land in the state. Yeah. Yeah, when you think about northern Wisconsin. It's, it's all trees. You, it's not <laughs> noted for ag, is it? <laughs> no. The grazers do a pretty good job yeah. up there, though, because the northern counties can grow really good grass. That's right. So, that's because that's what grew up there. Yeah. They've got a little bit better soil than what we've got down here in Jackson County. Right. Trumplow County, we've got some pretty good gravy because we got right. old soils. Right. And we don't soils. have the sandy soils, the acidic yeah. type soils. Yeah. They had all those pine needles and everything. <laughs> in them. Generation after generation yeah. of pines. So this is kind of what happened after... You know, the log booms when they came in there and they took out all those logs. And at the time, there was such a demand for lumber. I don't, I just don't think a lot of them ever thought twice about away. what's going to happen after all this timber is gone. Well, unfortunately, we as people, you know, don't sometimes think that far ahead. Didn't think that far ahead. And it, it just made so many problems. But I, I still think that was so terrible that they sold all that cut over land to these poor unsuspecting immigrants immigrants and people that thought oh here's our chance we're gonna buy a farm we're gonna have our own farm. a farm in yeah. america right that and they were going to you know this was their chance because this was a dream eight bucks an acre for farmland that's, that's pretty, pretty cheap reasonable. i think it's a little more expensive today i think so yeah <laughs> and uh, with the Internet connections, you right. know, we probably get to take a better look at what we're buying, yes. sight unseen. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a, a real kind of a hoax that got perpetrated <laughs> on a lot of poor people. It, it, it was really pretty bad. Shyster business practices. Yep. And, you know, if you go north from here, you don't have to go very far before you really get out of that zone where it's not the best for agriculture. Right, right. Yep. Um, Highway 10 is a cutoff. Yes, it is. It, it is. is. Yep. If you take 10 over to Nielsville, I mean, you're a short, a short, short trip. Yeah. And then you're into Glacial Outwash versus our side, which is the Driftless area. Yeah. That's where the glacier yeah. missed us. Right. And I know there's some really nice dairy farms like up in Clark County. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. But I, I do think probably growing row cops, you know, north up there, that's a real challenge. Yeah. 29 north especially. Yeah. Because it kind of, it's speckled and dotted. And there are places that were cut over that they did have some success with agriculture. Yeah. Um, and, you know, most of agriculture is is south where we have yeah. the prairie lands right yeah and they didn't have to deal with all those stumps oh those stumps could you imagine well they didn't have all the fun of blowing <laughs> them up <laughs> i'm sure that was just amazing <laughs> well and that you could get those supplies at downtown you could go pick well, up what you needed they had all this leftover you know explosive. what were they gonna do it you gotta make some money out of it you know you just can't throw it in a shed somewhere no. probably <laughs> oh my goodness yeah and i told someone yeah you used to be able to buy dynamite at the feed mill they were just like what are you kidding me <laughs> but they did but you know now every year let's see if i've got it here um Somewhere. Yeah. Nancy keeps dynamite in her kitchen junk drawer. I do. Here, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> oh, yes. This is going on, I think, right now. Right. As we speak. You can buy trees from the DNR, and if you go down to the courthouse, to the uh, land use office there. They've got a nice form you can fill yeah, out. Right here you can fill out and, and get trees. You can get different varieties of trees it's not just pine trees you can get shrubs yeah you can get blueberries and apple trees if you want to start uh, producing a little bit yeah. of your own food in your backyard um, and they do this annually right and fantastic selection yeah. and um, very reasonably priced oh, and they sort and they bag them yeah. for you 
And they've got a date in April or May, depending on when the last blizzards right. hit yeah. us, <laughs> um, that you can go down and pick up your trees. Yeah, it's, it's a great program. And we've had great success with the trees that we've gotten. We've gotten a variety of pine trees and fir trees and shrubs for kind of like wildlife habitat. Yeah, you can get things. you can get um, conifers and tamaracks, fruit trees, deciduous trees, and shrubs. We've also got packets like uh, um, like a wildlife mix where you can get bushes that attract birds. And yeah, apparently. Yeah. So it's a good deal, and, and that's why. And it's things. fun. Yeah, it's fun because. Sometimes you plant those trees. We do some remote planting. Yeah. And, you know, in the spring you go out and try to find them, and you don't find them, and you don't find them. And then two or three years go by, and you look at that little part of the hill. All of a sudden. And all of a sudden there's trees. That's right. We harvested one this year for Did our you? Christmas tree. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose one other thing we should mention real quickly here is sometimes FSA has... Uh, CRP tree planting. Oh, and that's the farm USDA Farm right. Service Agency. Right. I don't know what the status is right now of if they have any um, signups. I would assume it's usually this yeah. time of the year, so you can call down to the Farm Service Agency office in the county that you live, and yeah. they'll be able to give you some more details if that's something you're that's interested right. in for your ag land. So, um, and that's interesting because when they started that CRP uh, tree planting, uh, there's mainly oaks mixed in with pines. Yes, and then you'd go in and harvest at certain intervals. and Right. And what, what they found out was the deer really like to eat those oaks. Oh, yeah, white yeah. oak. They love right. white oak. Right. They'll go and they'll eat the top right yeah. off. And if they're not eating it, then they're rubbing their antlers on oh. it. And <laughs> Peeling off the hide. That's right. <laughs> So it's always a challenge. Yes. So I want to thank everybody for joining us today on part two of the logging. And like I said, Mary's going to go home and sharpen up her crosscut saw. I'm going to get her <laughs> sharpened up. We're going to head to the woods. <laughs> so thank you for joining us on the History Files. Files. And watch where that tree comes down. Timber. Timber. <laughs> there we go. There's a reason they hollered. That's right. <laughs>